Today I get to launch the Pixel 5a with 5G from Google. It's always exciting to do this kind of a thing and while this is a great mid-range smartphone, there are some things you'll want to consider before you go and purchase it. The Google Pixel 5a with 5G has a Qualcomm 765G processor, 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage space a 12.2 megapixel rear camera as well as a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera all in the back. It has an 8 megapixel camera in the front that exists as a hole punch up in the top left of the screen. The rear camera allows us to go up to 4K at 60 frames a second while the front camera allows us to go to a modest 1080p at 30 frames. Those cameras allow us to use features like astrophotography and the vaunted portrait mode with the relatively newer portrait lighting feature. Plus Google's night sight capability is available here as well and has been improved over the last few phones. And there's the cinematic pan feature, which I used here to make this shot look a lot better, even though I have fairly shaky hands. It has an ambient light sensor, an accelerometer, a magnetometer, which means it can sense if it's being magnetized to a surface, a barometer, and it has a fingerprint scanner on the back. For connectivity, it's gonna work in your country, although the big deal here is that it is 5G capable. Now, it's also Bluetooth 5.0, NFC for payments, Google Cast capable, and it also does, of course, Wi-Fi at both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Now, that has a little trick to it because it's not Wi-Fi 6 ready. This is only a Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi AC capable phone. It supports a single nano SIM card as well as eSIM if your carrier happens to support that. It has some pretty good stereo speakers and sports two microphones with noise suppression features that keeps it sounding pretty good when you're on those calls. It has the Titan M security module, which I care about for two-factor authentication, and I like that it's physically on the device I'm carrying at all times. Plus, it has wired connectivity in a 3.5 millimeter jack for those headphones of yours, and it has the USB-C connector at the bottom that you use for both charging and initial device setup. Now here's the funny thing about today's video and the launch of this phone. See, every specification I just said to you, I could have said to you at this same time or whenever the Pixel 4a with 5G launched because all of those specifications are exactly the same on last year's model. So what did Google do differently and why would you look at this phone versus last year's model? Well, the screen size has been increased to 6.34 inches and the ratio is now a full 20 to 9. This gives it a pixels per inch of 413, which is the same as last year's model, but the resolution is 2400 by 1080 on its full HD plus OLED screen. Obviously, this makes the phone a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier than last year's model, although I don't think you're going to notice that, but it did mean I needed a new case. Now, Google is, of course, selling their cases with this phone, and I really do like the maybe moon one that I got with these great little orange accents. It's $30, and I think it's actually worth it for its look and its feel. But the extra weight comes from what I think is the most important improvement in this year's phone. There's an average of about 800 milliamp hours increase in battery life. That represents a huge percentage of battery life on this device. Plus I think a little bit of extra weight went into some extra materials that give it its IP67 rating. That means it's both water resistant and dust resistant and it's actually the first rating we've seen on the A series of the Pixel phones. There is a removal of a feature though from the Pixel 4a with 5G to this Pixel 5a with 5G and that is the ability to connect to the millimeter wave 
5G network. So that doesn't mean you can't connect to 5G, but those millimeter wave ones, there's not a lot of those networks in North America in general, unless you're in the middle of pretty populous cities. And I did say in my video that you can watch up there that this would start to happen with some of the budget phones. All of this at a price point of $450 US, which definitely puts it as a competitor with the iPhone SE2 or the Samsung A52 5G and of course the OnePlus Nord internationally. Obviously the big differences between the Pixel 5a and the iPhone are the difference in OS. It's iOS versus the Google Android system here and this is a base Android phone. Plus the iPhone is much smaller at 4.7 inches in terms of its screen and they have different size capacities for memory storage so you could go smaller or bigger there. Otherwise, you'll see things that are pretty similar when you look at the specifications, although Apple uses their own chips, so that looks different. They don't have 5G on the iPhone SE, and there's a slight reduction in the megapixels on their cameras versus this Pixel. The thing with the iPhone though is they do seem to do a little bit better when we talk about video on this range of phones and they have Wi-Fi 6. The other competitor in the Samsung A52 5G is very similar in a lot of ways, although its camera array is exactly that. Of the three phones, Samsung's is the only one that gives you a micro SD card for additional storage space, should you need that, although I've never felt like that myself. Plus, what the other thing you're gonna notice with Samsung's phones is they kind of layer on their own interface and they also layer layer on their own apps in some cases. They use a lot of Google's apps, but they also layer on a number of their own. I don't enjoy that aspect, but it does help you to tie better to their Galaxy devices like their watches and the Samsung devices as well as smart things a little better. So that might be a benefit to you, but I'm finding the benefits of base Android from Google to be really big these days. And I'm gonna share with you some of the experiences I had with this phone. I really enjoy the newish Google Duo Share Screen feature. Now, this is available on a number of phones, but it was remarkably smooth when sitting on my Wi-Fi at home. And I was able to share screens in real time with people that I was calling. How good is it? Can you see that, that right there? That, um... Yeah. Stu's tweet and, and like moving and stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's been just great. I mean, I'm sure it's because of the Wi Fi, but. I have been playing Stadia for a while and I love using it on my Wi-Fi, but when you head out into the world, you're going to need those 5G speeds. Now, it doesn't have that 5G millimeter wave thing, but you don't need that for Stadia with the Pixel phones. It's a pretty great experience already. The phone's processor and the RAM, those are all well balanced here at this point with Android 11, and I'm looking forward to the improvements on Android 12. This phone is incredibly snappy on a daily basis, and I think they've kind of hit the right mark for responsiveness. Now, part of that responsiveness and part of the big thing to me is the Google Assistant. Now, I say that because you know what, for a lot of years I've been using Active Edge on my Pixel 4 XL and I was really upset when Google stopped giving that, but I think I can actually get used to the swipe up from the bottom corners of the screen to get the Google Assistant or just use my voice and the wake word. The features like hold for me, which allows me to not listen to hold music and stops me from going a little bit crazy when calling my bank, plus the ability to screen phone calls and then if they are spam, to block the numbers. All this coming from Google and in a lot of cases the Google Assistant, these are time-saving features and that's something near and dear to my heart. The new battery on this phone is, simply put, huge. And I have noticed easily I'm getting a full day without charging any time I'd like with pretty significant use on this phone. That is a big difference from the 4A sitting here and my Pixel 4 sitting over there. 
I also really enjoy the locked folder feature, which is now coming to your Pixel devices. This is actually a big deal for some of those photos that I take that I want to make sure aren't being shared. It's locked to me biometrically too. Unfortunately, one of the big features for Google Photos was that you used to get a lot of storage space for free or unlimited storage space. Now you get 15 gigabytes with any Google account and there are some deals here that Google's offering that actually saves you some money and kind of makes up for the loss of that. You get three months of YouTube Premium as well as three months of Google One and Google Play Pass. For those of you in the US, you'll also get three months of Google Fi calling and texting. And I think the recorder app on these phones is poised to become a pretty different tool. Now, these days what you use it for is to record little thoughts, but it also does full transcripts. You can edit those transcripts and now you can even output a video, which essentially is your voice in a wave sort of format with those transcripts. So this is poised, I think, to become something like a podcast publishing app. And the microphones on here are plenty good for that. I even filmed a video for our patrons here and I loved even the front facing camera, how it looked, it had some minor issues, but the microphones were fantastic. I think the biggest consideration for a lot of you who really like the Google Pixel phones is the Pixel 6 that's coming. And I would feel wrong not talking about what's gonna change with that just a little bit here. I think the biggest change that you're going to feel in those phones is a new sensor because if we're being honest about these phones, they have really had the same camera sensors. I think back to the Pixel 3 at this point and that has meant that they've become very good at writing software for those, but it has also meant that they're a little bit restricted in terms of video processing at this point and I think even now they're kind of hitting the limits of those photos that they can take. So that will be a huge change. And the other change is in the processor, which Google calls their Tensor. This looks to be a co-developed processor with Samsung that is heavily, heavily focused on machine learning and artificial intelligence. And that will likely open up a whole new world of features for Google in the coming years. I don't think you're gonna see a bunch of features come out with those phones other than things like photos and video features that are greatly improved. Otherwise, the Pixel 5a with 5G is the epitome of a mid-range phone with excellent software capabilities. I think Google pretty much has this design down to a T and I think they are one of the top in the market in terms of producing a mid-range phone. I am now actually going to switch to this device for a lot of the reasons I told you in terms of the battery life and just how snappy this little phone is. I'm going to be switching from that Pixel 4, which I told you I love that active edge. So that's a bit of a surprise to me at the end of this review, but it should be a pretty good indicator of what I think here. Of course, you can check out all the links down below for the Pixel 5a with 5G, but because you're someone who's obviously interested in Google products, then you'll want to understand where they are heading with this technology, especially that Tensor processor that I talked to you about. That's what this video up on screen is all about, and it will teach you how they're going to make your life easier without you actually having to do anything. So check that out there. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, guys, and of course, don't hate, automate.